Welcome, A Pushers, to this lecture on the Articles of Confederation, the United States of America's first government. And we'll see it was an epic L, okay, as we take a look deeper into some of those problems. Okay, one of the huge problems uh, with the Articles of Confederation, uh, it was adopted in 1777, but not ratified until 1781, which will be just eight months before the uh, Battle of Yorktown, which will effectively end the American Revolution, which makes it really hard to run a country that you made independent, but yet don't have an official government while you're fighting that. And so you can see the problems that George Washington had to overcome as head of the army, the Continental Army. Now, the real issue of why it wasn't ratified was surprise, surprise, westward expansion. And if you look in this picture, you can see that there are seven states that have these wide areas that they control, while six states or colonies still, but states now, uh, six states did not have access to this. Now, they thought was that these uh, states could sell off this land, they could make back money, and those states that didn't have this land would have to raise taxes with a people that were kind of in an economic depression right now. And so they felt like this all this land should go to the federal government, if we can call it that, the government of the Articles of Confederation, Hence, everyone was equal, and it took till 1781 for that to occur. Okay, what did this entail? What did the Articles of Confederation actually entail? And we, can, we need to know this because this will set us up for the Constitution and the Constitutional Convention. First, there was no executive branch. People were way too scared of having another king. So let's just not have a branch. So the only branch they really had was the legislative branch. It was a uh, unicameral, which means one, uh, one house or Congress in itself. There was no judicial branch either. It, that was left up to the states, and that's going to be a problem, especially when we get to Shays' Rebellion. And then also, each state in that Congress had a single vote, which meant that small states were as equal as larger states. And this rubbed larger states the wrong way. And you can already see the idea of having uh, two um, Congresses or two houses. Okay, And then they could not get anything done because, let me move my face, bills required two-thirds vote. And then amendments to the Confederation, the Articles of Confederation, had to be unanimous, which meant every single state had to agree, which if we know anything about states now, not every state's going to agree. Now, the one great thing the uh, Articles of Confederation did was their land ordinance of 1785 and 1787. The land ordinance of 1787 is also known as the Northwest Ordinance, Northwest ordinance and this is going to be very important. It basically took uh, what we would consider uh, maybe some Midwest states of Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, and Michigan, and basically found ways to sell those land, that land to pay off debt. Now, you can see the structure each... Um, each section uh, was broken up into a, a township, which had 30, uh, that was, a township was six square miles. And then it was broken up into 36 uh, sections that were one square mile each, with uh, the section number 16 being for, for public education. Hence, we get some of those big schools, uh, University of Michigan, Ohio State, uh, University of Wisconsin come about because of the Northwest Ordinance. Now, the Northwest Ordinance always also said, and this will apply to states as they came in after this, that you had to have 60,000 people, you were a territory under federal jurisdiction until you became a state and you had equal status with all the other states, meaning there would be no state better than another. This will be used throughout as we expand. Also, it should be noted that in the Northwest Ordinance, it forbade 
slavery in these in this territory, the territory that would become these five states, which is crucial because it's going to uh, basically give the North or those states that don't have slavery more representation, which as we get into the Civil War, it will all be about representation and having equal representation. There were many problems with the Articles of Confederation. Specifically, they couldn't raise money. They couldn't raise funds. They'd have to ask states for fund, which means the debt, especially after the American Revolutionary War, was accumulating without being able to pay any of that interest off. States would set tariffs against each other, meaning that a good from New York would be taxed going into Massachusetts, which means they'd have to sell it more, which means it favored a Massachusetts product instead of a New York product. Okay, And those states were making money. Uh, there was no judicial system. Okay, They couldn't raise an army. Uh, they couldn't uh, enforce treaties. And so basically Congress in the Articles of Confederation had very little to no power. And what's really going to set it off, especially for those property owners throughout the new uh, Confederation of States, was Shays' Rebellion. This is going to happen in Massachusetts with backcountry farmers led by Captain Daniel Shea, an expatriate. Uh, they were losing their uh, homes. Uh, they couldn't pay the mortgages. They couldn't pay the taxes. And so uh, the courts were uh, foreclosing on their property. And so they would be out of a home. So Daniel Shea leads this rebellion saying, hey, print more money. Print Why print more money? Printing more money is called inflation, which means more money in stock. Their costs, their mortgages stay the same, but they have more money, which means they can put more money towards that, less in taxes, and also just basically freeze the mortgages. And so they're going to go about, and it's going to be these farmers that come together, and they're going to go about and take over courthouses in these smaller towns and basically not allow them to foreclose on mortgages or farms and take their farms. It finally is going to get to the point that they're going to go to Springfield, where Massachusetts Supreme Court was, take that over, and also there was an arsenal of weapons, and so they were going to gain power and that way. However, the wealthy New Englanders basically paid for a militia because the Congress could not Right, They can't raise an army, and so you need these rich New Englanders to make a militia, pay a militia, and fight Daniel Shea's army, which they do, which they defeat. But what this is going to really do is scare people that the central government under the Articles of Confederation can't do anything, and it limits what they can do. And so there's going to be some super strong uh, pro uh, supporters, I guess you would say, of creating a, a stronger centralized government. And can you guess who that is? To King's College, I probably should brag and tag on these and astonish the problem is that I don't know. If you guessed Alexander Hamilton, you are 100% correct. Alexander Hamilton will make a good friend, James Madison, and they'll come together at this Annapolis convention. Okay. There will only be five states there, 12 representatives who are going to talk about uh, interstate trade. But yet what's going to occur is that they're going to agree to a meet in a year in Philadelphia to solve these problems that Congress has. This will be called the Constitutional Convention. Any questions, send them to me. We'll see you next time.